Well, Mr. Williams, we're so grateful to you to take this time to be with us today. It's, it's such an honor to meet you, and we certainly appreciate you. As a matter of fact, on behalf of all of my colleagues across the entire Air Force band career field and indeed band leaders all over the world, we're, we just want to thank you. We program your music all the time. You know, it fits what we do so very well, you know, the patriotism, the service, the heroism, all of those things come to mind. And, and so we're just very grateful to you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. It's a great privilege. And, you know, in the Air Force, we, we were kind of proud to claim you as our own. Okay. <laughs> because sure. you, uh, you served as That's an great. airman it's back so in 1952. And we, we don't know a lot about that. Could you, could you share some of your experiences in the Air Force? Sure. Tell us about yeah, that. I, I, uh, it was admitted, I think 1951, was that right, or 52 in there, and the, the first, and I, I wanted to get into the music program, of course, and I was a serious piano student, doing pretty well, but I also played brass and some trumpet, and some very little trumpet, and I don't remember exactly the mechanics of it, but basic training was in Lachlan Air Force Base in Texas. Right. Still is. And is it still? Yeah. And, and I must have requested in some form or whatever to, to go on the band program. And I, was, uh, and I was sent very luckily and happily to Davis Month in, in, in Tucson, Arizona, uh -huh. which was then a huge, I'm sure it's still there. Still is. Was there a and, band? There? And we had a wonderful band oh, there. Wow. It was a lot of my mates from LA, from, who had been students at USC, in my case, City College and UCLA. And they were all quite young. They were probably in their late teens or 20 years right. old. But, they, but we had actually fabulous players because there had been, the Universal Draft was still in place from World War II and, right. and the, the necessities and dramas of the Korean invasion in 50 right. okay. uh, changed the complexion, I think, of, of the inductees at that time. And it was wonderful because the Air Force was very generous with us and said, if you want to take courses at the University of Arizona, you could, which we did. Uh -huh. And I had a wonderful year there and enjoyed it very much. And then received orders to go to St. John's, Newfoundland for a period where I spent two years there. Was there a band there and as well? There was a band there and also a very good band. Oh, they did. And fabulous players. We had fantastic yeah. orchestra. Well, French horns, one of the trumpets, there were two virtuoso flutists, really, and fine oboes. Um, now, did you arrange as well? Uh, you were a pianist, or did you go I mean, in as a pianist? And then... I went in as a pianist and, and uh, a brass doubler. I don't know if you still do these things. Um, and, and because I could arrange for band, I'd done some arranging as a youngster, actually all through my teen years of mm -hmm. studying instrumentation and orchestration, growing up in a musical milieu. Mm -hmm. And uh, discovered that, that I could be useful in, in writing arrangements for our dance band, although published arrangements were available, but right. I could perhaps advance the harmonizations oh. or add some tricks or have some fun with personnel that I was living with. And uh, I remember a situation where we had a wind quintet and the available music was not great. Right, and so right. I thought, well, I'll write a wind quintet. <laughs> and so uh, uh, I did that. And when I was in St. John's, Newfoundland, we had we were a very active group. We had a, co a chorus, which I was the pianist for the chorus. We had a good conductor. And I wrote many arrangements for the, for the men's chorus. Where do you think all that music is? Do you no think? idea. Yeah. I, I, if there's a library, it, it would have been in that band library uh -huh. up there. I, would, I wouldn't have been conscious enough yeah. it that way to have it, yeah. saved any of it. And we also did a film, short film score for the... For the uh, province of Newfoundland, because I'd written some arrangements for the concert band, mm -hmm. we used to give summer concerts, I guess it became known somehow in the city of St. John that I could do right. music. Right. And so they, it was a film company there, Atlantic Films, and, and they wanted a special film score for the little travel log <laughs> film, really, about the right. province of Newfoundland. And, and they asked if I would do it, and I went to my our commander, and he whatever he had to do to, because we couldn't be paid for it, right. uh, gave us, graciously gave us permission to do this. And she, so 
well, our director said, go ahead and write the score. And That's so fantastic. I did that, and we got in the band room, and I rehearsed them, and then we went into Atlantic Films and recorded the score. With the, with with the Air Force with band. With the Air Force band, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so that was, and we, did, we did radio, we did endless dance sessions, uh, yeah. officers club shows that, you know, were there. And, so it was the the, the band in, in in Newfoundland was at that time in Northeast Air Command it served the, served the entire. I'm not sure that command is still in, in the form that it was then. No, I don't think so. But it was the province of Newfoundland, Labrador, Iceland, and Greenland, and the band serviced that those areas. And there were probably six or eight bases at that time. How many members were in the band? Oh, 50 or more. Oh, yeah, it was a good size. Quite a, quite a good sized band. Yeah. So we had a concert band and played, you know, concert repertoire and overtures and, and the rest in our concerts and some of my arrangements. And, right. And a lot of uh, Richard Russell Bennett and, and right. others. Right. Now, do you think your Air Force experience prepared you in any way for your Hollywood life? Uh, well, I don't, I don't think there's any question about that. Oh. Right. No, not at all. I mean, I, I, no question. Living in, as we were then, and I was living always on the base. I didn't have, I wasn't married or didn't have any other uh, available housing, and I was quite happy about it. And so we were living with these, with these young players, some of which I had known from Los Angeles. And certainly the best way, I think, to learn instrumentation is to live with and play with and study other people as they study their instruments. Right. And so in terms of, of instrumentation and arranging as far as band was concerned, uh, I had a tremendous education in the, in the Air Force in those years that I served there. And uh, I think in my mind reference it still. Really? So, oh, oh yeah, it was like, it was like being put into a... a these, the youngsters, all of us, were very excited about music and we were very keen to get back to conservatories, oh, yeah. most of them would come, right. which I did the minute I was discharged and went back to studying and mm -hmm. pretty shortly thereafter working commercially. But it was a wonderful experience musically. Now our... Uh Conductor Emeritus, uh, who I talked about earlier, Colonel Arnold Gabriel, was, um, you know, he led our band for so many years and helped establish an international reputation for the band. Uh, but he was a combat infantryman during World War II and actually served on the beaches of Normandy. Oh, fantastic. And he, along with, you know, many of us, program your hymn to the fallen as we're doing concerts that pay tribute to those who serve and especially those who have given the ultimate sacrifice. Do you think your military service inspired or informed that soundtrack to Saving Private Ryan or even something like Schindler's List? I don't think there's any question that it's, it, it, it was a part of my musical formation and my formation as a, as a musician, probably as a person also. But I have to also say, Larry, that, that because my age, the, World War II was an enormous influence on, on certainly me as a child and I think our generation. I was 10 through 13 in the years of the war. And I remember the 18-year-olds the all being drafted yeah. out of our neighborhood yeah. and watched the progress of the yeah. armies and the navies all through the war. It was the most dramatic event in my young life. Right. And of course I remember the music, and of course I remember the country spirit at the time, and how, in my young mind, the effort really defined who we were at that point completely. Mm -hmm. 24 hours a day, it was our mission to mm -hmm. complete this, get through this difficulty. Right. And, and so, I mean, I'm certainly not a, a military composer in any kind of sense, but, but since you mentioned Fit Him to the Fall, uh, the the impact of the film Save It Ryan, Saving Private Ryan, on me was not simply the impact of the film. It was the impact of my childhood and what I remember the adult suffering and oh, loss of these kids yeah. and and and, and the horrors of what that war created. Oh. I was old enough to appreciate what was happening to a to a pretty great extent. And so, looking at Saving Private Ryan, first of all, I think it's one of Stephen's great great films. Was fabulous editing job I think done in films in maybe decades I think, and one of the most vivid. I mean, I was not on a battlefield. It was certainly one of the most vivid and realistic depictions of what that life right. must have been like. And so the accumulation of all of this in my experience and, and my experience in the Air Force bands, 
is something that is a part of me that for better or worse, um, that is part of what defines how I think and how I feel mm. about our music, and about our country, and, and uh, about where I've been. But there's something so human, something so organic and powerful about your music. It's, you know, when I think about your music, I think about the melodies and, and how you, you seem to just so beautifully capture uh, the characters, uh, say, whether it's in Star Wars or in Saving Private Ryan, your melodies seem to just help tell that story in a very... Do you, do you labor over those uh, melodies and I, creating I do, those I do. characters? I do. I do. Uh, it's, it's inadvertent in a way if, if you and your band can play some of my music in the sense that in writing for film, we, at least we, we should think that we don't have 100% of the audience attention. They're going to be hearing dialogue concurrently with right. our music, sound effects, there's a lot of right. competition. And so it, in writing for films, it's, I don't mean to say that it needs to be simplified or it needs to be accessible in the, mm -hmm. in the, in the wrong sense of that word. But, but I, I do think it benefits from, certainly from melodic identification, if oh. that can be provided. Uh, and for melodic memorability, I mean, if you can create a music that is associated with that film only, you hear the noise of the film, if I can put it that way, and it's associated with you with whatever Superman or whatever it is, right. then we've done our job. If then you and your people can take it out of the film and play it for the for public, giving it 100% of its intellectual right. attention to right. concert, that's a bonus. That's something that, that wasn't part of the deal. <laughs> initially yeah but and that's so I what feel, we do yeah. I, feel, I feel so fortunate that when that can happen and a lot of scores where it can't happen because it shouldn't mm -hmm. it shouldn't have a strong melodic uh, context I I do struggle greatly with the simplest things because I you know if you, if you want to get a tune that is shaped in six measures or seven notes or, or, or right. whatever that can right. be expanded and extended or not something that may seem simple or, or simply diatonic, which is to say scale-wise, uh, uh, can be very, very difficult. Uh, deliberate obfuscation and complex, uh, complexity is not hard to lather, or uh, rather layer onto, onto a musical structure. To peel things away and say exactly what you mean, and the fewest words you can right. put together without being oversimplistic or without mm -hmm. being banal or without being whatever the, the detriments and the dangers of simplicity may introduce, mm -hmm. uh, that's the hardest part of the job, the melodic part of it. That yeah. seem, seems the easiest. Well, as I mentioned earlier, your music is so perfect for our mission because we're so, you know, lucky to be able to honor those who have served in our service and in, in the military and uh, to pay tribute to those who've either given their their lives mm -hmm. um, or to just celebrate our freedoms as Americans and and your music is is so perfect for that in so many ways and we 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 use it often and we're so grateful that the transcriptions of many of your things are available as a matter of fact we uh, we just did a tour down to Texas and Arkansas and, and took a new transcription of your American journey. Oh, good, good. Paul Lavender good. is releasing a new uh, uh, three or four movements of that mm -hmm. uh, six-part series that you did, and it was well-received all good. across the good. South. I'm glad. And, and we recorded it. Uh, and we're looking forward to releasing that next year or th later this year. Great. And then last year, we recorded a piece that you wrote for the Marine Band, mm -hmm. uh, for them. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a little jealous, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's a wonderful piece, and, uh, and I brought that CD, and I hope you'll take time to listen to it. But we would be so thrilled, and I know you're busy, if you could just find time to write something for the Air Force Band. Well, I will certainly try. <laughs> Finding time to write something may be hard. Uh, 
but it still would be something that I would love to try to do. Uh, I would just I'd cherish it forever. Or even and just to have you come and conduct the band. Which would be, a, a, a visit would be easier from time point to be able to conduct them or not conduct them, just say hello and, I, and yeah. I'd be happy. We must do that. I, I, I really feel yeah. that it's something I would enjoy enormously. Oh, we to cherish tell them. them how far they've come in the Air Force Band music from my day, although we were pretty good. Yeah, it sounds yeah, like yeah, it. Yeah, we were, uh, well, we've had a pretty, pretty great history, and you're a part of that. We're so appreciative That's of great. your time today. Thank you so much Thank you for joining much. me. My great privilege to be with you. Yeah. God bless you. Thank you.